forget ah camera off if you don't want to be recorded yeah for everyone who doesn't want to be on the recording um camera off uh don't speak but you can happily type and uh, uh one of us will will um make sure that um still gets covered i'm gonna do screen sharing hopefully now i'm now i've jumped around let me just quickly make sure i'm set up here looking good so hello cohort six already um as ismail said my name is patricia i am like uh resident fellow here at Open Life Science, just freshly um, joined the team this week. Um, but I've been like in, involved with like some of the previous cohorts as a mentor. I'm gonna talk you through um, the um, upskilling session, or is it is it called upskilling session? Um, we usually say skill up, but upskilling is exactly the same meaning. <laughs> yeah. Um, a session on GitHub for collaboration um, using slides um, kindly um, created by Malvika and Yo uh, in in previous cohorts, um, and based on um, a lot of uh, other material that is out there. So it's a bit of a of a mashup on um, various resources that are out there. Um, you should be able to find all the links um, in the Etherpad. So the links is in the etherpad um, is the slide deck that should be available for you to follow along and always come back to. Um, and it's based on training materials that Malvika created. Um, uh, we'll work with a GitHub link later, um, but uh, we'll make that uh, available to you when it's needed for the exercise. And I've uh, linked to a markdown cheat sheet that um, is always um, quite can be quite useful and what we're gonna uh, cover in the session is basically a little bit about like what version control is why it's important um, an introduction to to github as a platform um, using github and markdown and then going through a few exercises of act, action, actually um, actively adding a readme file um, to a, a repo you create and um, creating a pull request on GitHub. And then depending on uh, how much time we have, like guiding you through some of the other nice features um, that GitHub has, but there's also, there will be follow-up sessions in this cohort where, um, well, there's been more talk about using GitHub for project management. So anything we won't cover here, you know, there's it's going to come up again uh, time and time and again. And um, it is in the slides uh, if you want to do things in your own time after the session. So I think most of you probably have like tried to collaborate with um with with colleagues and friends on collaborative documents in uh one way or the other um and probably come across some of the challenges touring shout out to the touring way illustrations which is always good and that's what happens when you use slides created by Malvika they are all, um in there um, nicely promoted. So um, uh, I don't know if, if someone wants to to shout out in the chat a few um, challenges that you've come across uh, in uh, when you tried to collab uh, work on on documents with other people. Giving you a few few minutes to type some ideas. What happened when? Yeah, trying to figure out 
when things were added in or deleted for that matter. Who edited at which time? Why they edited that? That is uh, good. Even like who, who actually owns the last update and has the um, basically the main version. And then we have some things like people assume that you know some of the GitHub terminology. We'll um, get to that, hopefully. So yeah. Um, also a shout out to uh, funky um, document names uh, when they get shared. Um, final, final one, final two, um, yeah. So basically all the things that, um, you know, you just raised, there's like uh, potentially sometimes um, edits at the, the same time and two different version that someone has to to merge. Uh, it's, it's just like, um, it can become a little bit of a mess. Uh, if you're um, working in collaborative documents and um, things change and you're not entirely sure why, when, and uh, how. And that is basically always the, the case when you're, um, so versions are always the case when you're working on something. So even, even if you're like in your, in your setup, like this little fox here, um, on his machine, he has like um, he, she, let's make it a female fox. She has um, uh, various folders where she um, stores uh, documents and those documents have some, some content. And even though, when uh, any of these documents get gets um, edited, like um, she deletes something uh, in, in a draft and adds a new paragraph, all that is kind of stored locally. You'll see that uh, sometimes when you like use um, use Microsoft um, products, you know that's like things like the the back button and uh, um, options like that. Basically, means the system is storing that you're making changes. It's not necessarily visible to you, but it is kind of there. So. Revisions of and versions. So you basically have like the um, one document over time. You start with um, a text. You delete something. You change things in there. Um, you delete something else. Make further edits. Add paragraphs in. So all that is like revisions and versions of um, of one file over. Um, a period of time and a versioning system basically lets you jump between um, each of these these points basically where we you set markers um, of of major changes and then it already came up or uh, that there's like um, you know sometimes those changes you come with uh, you, you give them interesting file names, um, not necessarily meaningful and uh, not descriptive of the changes um, that you've you've made and what differentiates um, those those documents. So going back even and jumping between these versions and revisions um, sometimes can be a bit of a hit and miss because you're not actually you can't see. Um, or remember, even if it's if it's for yourself, and even even worse, if it's something that you share with other people, um, what exactly has changed between um, the, the the versions, and um, yeah, what well, um, so going back to to old files sometimes is can be can be difficult because you're not entirely sure what you're looking at. That's basically um the same 
artist with another wonderful Turing Way illustration to, uh, uh, to make the most of them, um, jumping between various versions here. So um, yeah, version control is basically a system that like um, helps you manage, manage those changes um, in, in a file. You can, if you are could do that like um, with a strict file versioning system um, and uh, if you agree that within your collaboration that can work well. Um, Google Drive and Dropbox uh, and um, other tools they kind of keep a history for you and um, I think in Google Drive now you can um, name versions so you basically can go in and um, actually add um, you know, highlight certain uh, versions in the history and um, give them a little bit more more meaningful description. And um, advanced tools like Git, which we're not going uh, into in full detail here, um, um, give you um, um, uh, yeah, a fairly powerful version control system that you can use uh, locally on your machine. Um, so revisions is basically uh, every time you make a, a change um, to a file that has a timestamp on when you made that change and um, describes the, the changes that you made and is associated to a person that made those changes. So that's the uh, of like vocabulary here. Um, and yeah, the, the advantages of using version control systems is in that you can collaborate in real, real time. You have um, a, a his, documented history, um, can go back to previous versions if that's needed and um, just makes it easier to um, keep on, on top of your collaborative documents. So, Basically, um, on on how that will look on GitHub, and we can talk uh, you through that in in the session. Is like friendly dinosaur here um, wants to collaborate with our fox and um, the chicken on one document where the fox um, like removes some pieces. Um, the dinosaur like writes a uh, um, documentation uh, and our and dear chicken here provides um, screenshots and further instructions and they can all do that at the same time um, without getting into any conflicts. So that what that's what what um, git and um, github as a collaborative platform allows it. Um, you to do. So what's this GitHub thing? You've all probably like seen it, been, like might have accounts already. Um, it's basically, um, yeah, a, a service where you can collaborate initially designed for code, but are now also like um, used for many uh, um, yeah, other types of, of projects. It's basically an overlay on top of um, the Git version control system. It has like a, a nice interface. It has like a, an additional project management and collaboration functionalities. Um, it is not an open product, so it's owned by uh, Microsoft. Um, there are um, similar services that are we could argue are slightly more open, or, um, but um, GitHub is is widely used. And if you want to collaborate, it's always good to do that um, on a platform where folks are already that would help out. Um, so um, that's basically the advantage of, of GitHub. It's like most people um, have an account there already, know how it works, and a lot of um, open collaborative um, projects are hosted there. 
um there's a question about like uh of the file needs to be in plain text format when using revision control um no not necessarily like uh github git can um uh, handle well it doesn't handle things like like videos or image changes um so it is like mainly text based yes yeah um yeah so you can integrate videos and images into your text but it won't um it won't track changes to that it's yeah so yes but it's mainly text based Um, so yeah, this is that's GitHub. Um, on GitHub, you can host base your repositories, which is kind of the terminology for um, uh, a project. Um, online, it helps you with um, with the collaboration because you can add uh, contrib contributors, so you can officially like. Um, share a project with um, other people that um, work with you on that and um, collaborators so if it's if it's publicly on github other folks can just help you out if they find it um, it has a web interface um, for version control which means you don't have to figure out how to do git locally you can do that and um, you know synchronize with um github if you have that level of skill at some point but it is um for um folks who um just don't need necessarily the advanced functionalities it has additional project management and communication um, options which we will show you some of and it's basically the the whole package makes it um useful a useful platform for a project where you want to really work with other people um show off what you're you're doing and um you're inviting others to contribute so that was a lot of me talking um so before we go on and uh Take a bit more into GitHub. Has does everyone here have already a, an account? Can you just give me thumbs up or uh, yeses. If not, now would be the time to um, go off and create one so you can join the exercises if you want it. Um, but yeah, I see a lot of thumbs and ticks. And so I think we're good on that end. Um, and most folks have already, um, yeah, signed up and maybe done the, the basic um, or some, some interaction of, uh, with GitHub. So what we're doing is, um, we're gonna show you how to set up a repository on GitHub. Um, so basically get your, your project started. And for that, I will actually do the, the no, that was not the button I wanted to press. Um, we're gonna do, uh, live demo and that was me switch trying to switch screens and um and said I killed my presentation that's good I hope we're back and you can see uh my github profile um yeah all good all good so no how to create a repository you if you have your profile already you have you can see I have like an overview um and then you um also have like a list of your repositories and you 
projects that you might be involved in. So to create a new repository, there's a, yep. make that a bit bigger so you can see that better. Um, yeah, there's a decent amount of white space on a, on a GitHub page if it's getting big enough. So uh, this is probably not the, the worst idea to, so you can actually see buttons and where I'm clicking uh, around. So you have a new button here, which means get takes you to um, a page that lets you create a new repository. You can, um, you know, you could import one if you had one. You can, if you are part of organizations that have templates set up, you can pick a template. I didn't even know um, that I, I had this functionality, so you might not necessarily have that. Um, so you have a repository under your own profile here. So, and uh, name, uh, we say we give that, uh, let me just go back, friendly collaboration party. So it tells me this is still available. So I haven't, gone through the exercise yet or, or created something like that in the in the past um, which is good I can give it a more um, interesting it gives gives you suggestions for repository names that was new to me as well um, you can give it a more in-depth description, which um, at some point, if you're working on a on a project that you really want to, um, you know, get collaborators on, if you have like a a, a pithy um, one sentence summary of what you're trying to achieve, that would be um, a good place to add that. Your um, repository can be public. That means um, everyone. Um, on the internet can see the repository, um, but you know, still um, you can choose who um, can, um, you can make changes to it, um, but you can also make it private if um, for any reason, you know, if you want to, um, you don't think you can make it publicly accessible. You want to try things out first and you can switch between those two settings um, at, at any time. Um, um, but if you like start doing something uh, private and you make it public or the version history that you have created at, uh, up to that point will become publicly available as well. So just um, something to, to keep in mind um, if you're starting. Um, with a private repository first. Um, you can start um, the repository with a readme file. I do believe readme files have been introduced already um, by this point as the, you know, into basically the introduction page to your, to your project. Um, Git ignore is uh, a fairly advanced setting if you have like Git set up um, locally. So for the moment uh, we can um, create that. And you can also choose um, a license that you want to assign to your project. Um, licenses are like, you know, good to have because if you don't license things, then it basically means all rights reserved. and people are actually not um, um, you know, technically need to ask for permission for anything. They um, want to use your, your content um, that you've created with. So that, um, you know, 
um, licenses are always a good thing. These are mainly um, software focused licenses. Um, and Creative Commons here is also for all kinds of other materials, seeing as we're mainly gonna be playing around with, with text here. Um, let's pick that one. And then we have a create repository button here. And here we go. So this is, um, here's your repository. Um, Susanna, depending on what's in your, um, what your project is about, I think like, you know, CC0 um, and CC BY are, are, are good licenses if you're not creating code also as part of it. Um, Yo, do you, is there an official OLS position on, on licenses? Anything you'd recommend? Um, that's a great question. So there's two things that would make me uh, modify. One is if people in my community particularly tended to use a specific license, consider using the same one because it's most likely to be compatible with their work, which is useful. Um, if that doesn't apply, um, I personally, th there's, there's two easy camps to fall into. One is if anyone reuses my work, you must reuse it under the same license, what's known as copyleft. Um, and that's that's a very nice ideological stance. But the challenge with it is that if people, let's say uh, maybe someone in industry wishes to use your work, they may not be able to because they may need to take it in-house. And so people don't tend to use things that have the copyleft licenses in some cases for that reason. Um, and so the other side of that fence is you can use this any way you like, um, including privately, you know, take it in-house in or closed. And that's what's known as a permissive license. Um, and if, if you're, so basically I'd say if you're going idealistic open, you go for copyleft. And if you're going for practical open, you go for permissive is probably the way that I'd put this. I tend to go for practical open. So I'd go for something like uh, MIT if it was software. Um, but I think either of those options are very good. And then you say, okay, what does that mean uh, in terms of actually, do I want a copyleft or do I want a um, permissive? So if you're looking for something that's not software, Creative Commons share alike, is the viral one. So that's CC dash SA or CC by SA. And if you prefer one that you're saying, actually you can use it in any way you wish with words, they're not happening. If you want something you can use in any way that you wish, then I would go for, um, I, would, I would omit the SA clause. Um, I'll, I'll pop links to both of those in the chat. Um, and just to ask, answer the final one, can licenses be changed later on? Yes, with a big star beside it, which is the more people that have contributed, the more complicated that gets. So if you, um, every person who contributes holds copyright. Um, so if 300 people have contributed and you want to change the license, in theory, you need to contact 300 people. If one person has contributed, it's not so hard to change because you can ask that person presumably and then you can change it. Or you can even dual license. It, it can get very complicated very fast. So trying to think about what, what aligns with what you need and trying to get it right early on is a good idea. <laughs> yeah, and on the, the change, um, one word to as well is like, it's, it's like from the licensing point of view, not like uh, just, uh, Disregarding the what you just said that you actually have to like ask everyone for permission. Um, going more open is easy. Going more restrictive is like really, really hard because you've basically already um, told people that they can use it. And at that point, it's then basically impossible to 
rein that in and track everything down. So basically they, whoever has re reused the version as it was like more permissively licensed, um, obviously is still allowed to do that. So um, yeah, you then can't take rights away from these people um, just because you at some point change it to a more restrictive license. So that, um, yeah, licenses are like, yeah, we got a little bit off top, slightly off topic because they're like, you know, they are now, um, a good thing about GitHub is that they're like really making an effort in, in making them um, visible and encouraging every project to have a license. Um, but it is a, a complex uh, topic. Um, the more you dig into it, the more questions you have usually. And at some point you feel the need to consult a lawyer. Um, so. Oh, and that's an upcoming topic. I'm oh, sorry if we spoiled anything then. Uh, so, right. Uh, let me just quickly check uh, the slides again, just to make sure we're still on track. Um, um, so we have created our um, uh, our repository. You can see up here that it's public. Um, you can see that the readme is displayed here. You can see the files. Um, that have been created as part of the uh, the setup. Um, you have like the option to get a copy of the the code here. Um, you can add more files. Um, what do we have here? Just gonna make sure uh, everything is covered. Um, you're gonna go into branches and forks that are coming um, are shown here uh, and a bit of that terminology in a bit. commits which is basically your change history you can see as well um yeah i yo am i missing something that's good um i was just going to suggest that now might be a good time we could pause the recording for a little bit and ask everyone to see if they can make their own repo um and put a little check thumbs up when they're done who's in charge of the thank you um, so yeah, back to um, GitHub terminology. Um, I don't think commit is actually on there, but like commit is basically just um, you're formalizing a change that you're making to a file. Is that a good description, Yo, or is that like a a bad definition? But that's kind of like um, what that means in the or what I under, have understood it to mean in the um, uh, Git language space. Um, I could offer two analogies. The first one is if you're um, a computer gamer and you get to a point where you've just done something cool or you're about to do something dangerous, you save your game. And then if you mess something up, you can go back to the save game. And so thinking of commits as save games can be very helpful. If you're not a gamer, Think about, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Okay, let's say you're baking a cake. And it, if you've ever like maybe put too much salt or loads of baking powder or something and it's just gone completely wrong, imagine if you could actually save the cake <laughs> from before you put too much salt in and go back and try again from the point where you didn't actually mess it up completely. So that's what commits are like. It's just saying, here's a point where this is good enough I want to save it. And if I need to come back, here's where I can come back. Nice. Thank you. That, yeah, that made a difference. Yes. And Susanna is kind of, um, uh, I think, giving us like some some nice ling lingui linguistic um, background for my, why it might like 
be called commit is because at that point you commit to um, that that version as your safe version at that period of time. Um, but yeah, it could it could as well just be called change instead of commit, and it would or safe, and it would be the same thing. It's just that um, commit is the terminology used. Uh, da, da, da. Um, I'm gonna jump into the vocabulary first and then we can um, go back into slightly um, yeah more uh, active things on um, actually markdown and pull requests um, but yeah because that's the the thing that is probably most Git and GitHub specific is the terminology and commit actually was on there. So uh, here we go again. So committing is basically saving a version of your files. And um, GitHub also lets you add a commit message. Um, so to say, which basically uh, um, lets you add a little description of um, what you've um, changed in uh, um, comparison to to previous versions. So it's actually um, quite then creates a, your commit history is basically a bit of a change log that uh, um, is, is, lets you um, understand how um, the, how your project or your repository has changed over time and um, yeah, without necessarily having to open all the files to, to see exactly the, the difference. Um, branches and uh, forks are basically, um, um, yeah, copies or offshoots of like your um, repository, a branch, um, exists in uh, is um, a parallel version um, uh, or a copy in, within your own repository. Um, so that only um, um, branches can only be created by um, people that actually you've given um, edit rights within your re repository. You'll correct me if I'm like completely missing this. <laughs> um, um, but basically, like an edit rights on um, GitHub are called basically right access. So you're granting people um, right access so they can directly write into um, your repository. Um, and then they can basically create um, a copy of um, the repository on. And that's a it's a branch and can work on, for example, the um, uh, effect, um, um, uh, a fix, um, or some additions there, while you keep editing on um, the the main branch and uh, keep going, and then you can merge these things together and uh, create a again a version that has all the changes in them so yeah back to cake cake baking um so if you divide your dough basically and um add some some fancy flavors uh, and additions in um one of these and um and combine them again later so basically marbled cakes marbled cakes are uh when you when you merge the branches of your repository, you get a marble cake. Um, um, a fork is um, basically if um, someone creates a copy of your repository, um, that person doesn't have right uh, access or, um, you know, just wants to create a complete offshoot and uh, doesn't necessarily intend, intend to make um, changes that uh, go back into your project, then they uh, can create a fork. So basically a fork is, um, is just a, 
a copy of your repository at that point in time. Um, and there's a task you can basically, if you, if you fork something, you can still ask it, ask for it to go back into the original. Yeah. So that would be, um, that would be, uh, the famous pull request basically, um, do, do, do. uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so a, a pull request is basically um, when you ask the main maintainer of the project to combine the the work from um, a, a repository that you have either forked or a branch if you've um, if you have right access to that project and um, ask them basically to integrate your changes into the main version of the project. Um, uh, the pull request terminology is basically you're asking the main maintainers of the project to pull in your changes. So you're requesting that they pull from the work you've done into the um, main repository so that's um the way that the, you know where where that term comes from it's uh, initially like i didn't find it super intuitive because you kind of um you're pushing something towards them but the terminology on github is basically that you're asking them to pull from you and it's that view um that the terminology reflects um, on some other uh, platforms i think it's called merge request where um you you know reflecting that you uh, ask for your changes to be merged into the main piece of code so that's the main uh that's the main pieces of terminology and yes it's not intuitive but at least the you know the explanation made sense, so that is good. Um, so you can play around with that. Um, and, you know, you can basically fork any public repository that's out there. So that's um, why we talked about licenses, um, you know, a part of the GitHub terms and conditions is basically that you grant any other user on um, GitHub the permission to fork your repository. So um, everyone's allowed to make, make a copy that's uh, within the GitHub's uh, terms of use. And we could actually, we have this as a like slightly more organized exercise. If I go, should go back into, um, into playing around with a live demo. Let me see if I can do this without completely. Losing things again. Um, what I've now jumped over is a big is markdown editing. Uh, should we do a quick whiz through markdown editing so folks can um, actually, you know, if you go and um, to do the exercise of editing things. So let's just press the edit button here. So Markdown is basically like um, um, the right terminology, just some codes. No, not code, codes of, 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 and, and like text. I didn't like acoustically hear you, yo. I'm not sure if like text, 
text or text is right? yeah um it's basically it's a it's a basic way to help you text editing and you know add some highlights in so you can if you're not entirely sure what you're doing most of the github things has a preview where you can basically like immediately see which uh, effect anything has that you're typing in, in markdown so um you can see what is here in quite a um, um big font here has a hash and the ha hashes are basically used for um, headings and um, the the same way you can basically have like different level of headings when you use like a um, text editor um, you can do that here so um, that is if I can actually figure out where hashes are on my keyboard yeah is this your new keyboard that's confusing you <laughs> yeah sorry you've got a new fancy mechanical keyboard not only does it make like uh, does it seem to be incredibly loud when I'm typing um, every once in a while I'm also just like where are things so um Patricia one can, hash I, is based... can I just ask yeah. you to zoom in a bit uh, Oh yeah, because now we even have more white space here. Yes. Thank you. Um, so one hash, basically highest uh, level heading, three hashes would be this is a level three heading. I think we're, I think it goes up to up to six is that the limit yeah i'm getting a thumbs up from you on that so you can see in the preview that's now slightly smaller we can add uh no that's seven so that won't work level six for comparison So you can basically add um, different types of levels in your document. Uh, the other thing you can do is use um, stars or um, dashes. Does that work now if I combine both? basically they create bullet points yes and you can mix them but apparently if you use two different ones it creates a little bit of an extra space that's interesting um the other bits obviously um numbered lists And also here it has some logic if I add a nine in here. It actually numbers things um, through properly, even if I'm messing around with it uh, when, while I'm typing it. It's just going to order it accordingly. Um, And we're trying to highlight something. We can use again. Oops. We can use underscores around words. One underscore. Let's see what that does giving us italics uh, 
if we do two underscores, it's, oh, where's my mouse here? Turning bold. Can you use shortcuts? Ooh. Um, I don't know. I've never tried. Like this and then control B. No, you can't. Okay, so it works on issues. It doesn't work in PRs. Yeah. Yeah, uh, issues basically, um, if you ever want to, to try like issues, basically have um, a, give you a text editor that does most um, of the magic for you. So you don't necessarily have to learn the syntax uh, in, the, in the issues. Uh, not here. Um, and similar to the bullet point lists in, in a set of um, underscores, you can also use stars. And that basically has the same effect. So that will also be bold. It's a good question Whatever. about changing font color. Is that possible? You can. Better you, know, you can probably combine it with some HTML yeah. magic to make that possible. So Markdown itself doesn't. Markdown is really just like a plain text editing, giving that structure. But you can combine Markdown um, with with other things. So you can um, can use some HTML syntax in here. You can use other bits and pieces, and then basically. Um, bring more advanced functionalities in from, from um, other parts if you want to. Um, but yeah, Markdown is really just like, it's a, it's a fancier version of plain text, basically, <laughs> but uh, also can't do too many fancy things. Yeah, Yo, please expand or correct. Uh, no, so you were right. Um, you you can embed a lot of HTML in this, but I think it's probably beyond the scope of today. Um, I just wanted to note the time. Uh, so yep. it's we have about tw 21 minutes left uh, in the session. I wonder if um, moving to the collaboration exercise on the RLS6 repo might be a good next step, just to make sure people can have some practical while we can help. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, the only thing that I've not covered, I think, is like how you would introduce links and images and things like that. But um, there are cheat sheets. And as we said, like the issues actually give you the, let me, let me quickly do that. So I am going to write a proper commit here. Um, I'm going to call this adding markdown examples that is um, already covering things enough here. It would give me the option to create a new branch if I want it, but I'm going to just be um, committing that directly. So here you actually get the saving. <laughs> um, so yeah, just quickly, if you... Um, see issues and you create uh, a new issues here it gives you um, all the editing functionalities really um, and it does the markdown for you so this is how you would create a checkbox for example um, you know bold as a as I said like it gives you the two stars already so if you want to do um, introduce like or learn syntax for adding adding links adding in images uh, um, this one 
like issues are a good way to to see what you're doing and you always have like the preview as well um but yes we want you to get collaborating on the um on the OLS repository. So the magic that has happened while I've done all the rambling is that uh, the Etherpad nodes have made it uh, to GitHub. So uh, the link in the Etherpad, and um, I guess we can also pop that in the chat, takes you to um, a file in the GitHub OLS repository. And there, we will ask you to create your first pull request. So uh, the thing, the step we've um, not asked you to do, but we you would need to do uh, uh, now before kicking off in line 90, I think you all need to create a fork first of this repository because otherwise you won't have no no so uh no it won't be required i think um oh, it might automatically create a fork yeah, yeah. okay so oh, that's the sorry. right it, so this is the point where um it's it's gonna work slightly differently for you than it does for me because I do have certain rights on the repository, um, which it's like, um, but if you, you all should be able to press the edit button here to start adding your changes in. And for all of you that don't have right access, that will create a fork of the, a repository automatically and um, for me again it, it, because I do have access it gives me the option to commit directly or create a new branch but for you it will automatically um, create the fork you're asking you to do is uh, to find the roll call from line 40 onwards. You can also see that similar to either pad um, markdown actually, um, you know, gives you uh, line numbers, which is quite, quite useful. And we're basically asking you to um, add your icebreaker question back in as a change here. And um, then committing that and creating a pull request now. I'm not sure, do I have slides potentially that? So they maybe, are in the slides, yeah. If I can You'll... just offer the suggestion here, maybe just modify your name quickly, do a pull request in GitHub. Um, and then we can stop recording again and let people try it themselves. Yes. Um, at the moment, which is, which is just um, the README that we have created, that I have created. Um, but yeah, it should give you more options to if I go back in has it like now yeah now it tells me well, it's just a bit slow then that my site is live here um as I said we can add a custom domain it lets you um it sometimes has an easier way to add nice themes to it um, but yeah, um, with a bit of reading of the help pages, there are plenty of um, themes out there that... I, I just want to jump in to say we are just over the 19... We are at the time, so sorry. So, sorry, yeah. everyone. 
Pe people who, if you need to leave, feel free to leave. And you know, you have us on Slack, so you can always ask more questions there. Just, just saying that, I know Patricia, you're still going. Yeah, I'll stop now. I'll, I'll stop to let folks that need to leave, leave, and then we can pick, uh, pick up any questions that still, if someone has the time to stay longer, we can. I think I need a full day of GitHub. <laughs> um tutorial training whatever um i mean yeah i mean i will do it but in by myself but i think it's always nicer to do it with people it feels a lot more manageable you know listening to you and watching you you know uh, patricia like going through things like feels less um uh, yeah overwhelming um yeah, a week. Yeah. <laughs> Susan says a week. Um, a lot of it is really like just also like in in a project where you can't do much damage is like just click every button once and see what happens. <laughs> that that is like, you know, that is a tactic because also like GitHub changes makes changes to the interface if you're not using it on a daily basis. There's like you know things slightly move so, um, it is really a matter of just going in clicking here figuring out what this does and um, uh, a lot of it is is actively using it there was a comment earlier on it was from Emmanuel Emmanuel I don't know if you want to ask a um, if you have a specific question or if you want to share your general um I know I have a general sense of confusion with GitHub and I've been using it for over a year. I'll just note we are recording right now. Um people might feel safer. Oh, okay, sorry. Are we? Without the recording.